Hey everybody, it is Saturday, November 22nd. I have bid you all a good afternoon, and I wanted to let you know something extraordinary happened. They finally proved Einstein's equation, E equals MC squared, which of course, if you can't remember, was energy equals matter times the speed of light squared, or that stating all energy and matter in the universe are actually equivalents. You cannot add and subtract without them kind of maintaining a harmonious balance. Um, a really beautiful kind of uh, equation in physics. Uh, apparently, it gets really difficult, but the end result is simple enough to understand that there's a center, like a center of unity behind all these forces of matter and energy. It's kind of cool. Uh, it gets me thinking, though, a lot about kind of uh, dialogue that's been coming out a lot today about religion and science and how they interact or how they uh, one should just triumph the other and smash the other one to death. It seems like a lot of these conversations that have been coming out seem extremely. Uh, polarizing, like either you're on one side or on, you're on the other, and uh, or you're in the middle and you're you're quiet because you have no opinion. Well, I think all those can be really harmful. Uh, the point being, you see a lot of kind of religious fundamentalism that comes out and really holds on to their idea of the truth, and still, you know, even to this day, is maybe perhaps denying certain scientific facts that it should probably reconsider. But then at the same point, you have these kind of scientific uh, communities and this neo-atheist movement of kind of a Richard Dawkins thing that almost likens religion to a, a disease, uh, which is another strange way of demonizing uh, a group of people or the other. So I think both sides need to kind of take uh, one thing into consideration. And let's, let's go back a little bit. Let, let's just say that, remember, there was a point in time when all people worshipped the sun, okay? And they all had to worship the sun because it was the only... Uh, source of sustenance. It was the very visible thing that brought all all elements of life to the forefront. And of course, we know now that it was in uh, exploding stars that all of the atoms that make up our uh, bodies and atomic compounds of the material world it made them possible. So literally, all things came from the sun, and that was both a uh, religious and scientific exploit because at one point it was it was allowing them both to stu uh, to study and discover the world around them for ancient people. And uh, so one thing that's really important to remember is that a lot of times we crystallize the two elements of science and religion. We say that religion is, uh, is fully emotional and in intuitive uh, escapade, while as science is this purely rational and uh, critical kind of escapade or endeavor, if you will. And when we think about it in those terms that a lot are largely agreeable, we would say, yeah, sure, science is rational. But at the same time, we, we, were we to say now, uh, is science void of intuitive elements? Does it does it not have an emotional or a passion-driven, intuitive uh, response to to further pursue its own endeavors to kind of continue to remain excited about you know science itself? Well, I think that if we deny science this intuitive element, we deny all the major scientific discoveries that have ever happened because there has to have that same sort of passion to drive you to have the curiosity to even begin your hypothesis and begin your studies. So the same thing goes for religion, at least on some respects, although it may be easier to uh, say that religion doesn't have a rational uh, ground. Um, it does have to, from time to time, re-continually connect itself with the world or would not have any place in that world. And I would, I would argue that religion in its higher forms, uh, as well as science in its higher forms, they, they do not actually uh, contradict each other whatsoever. And of course, this goes back to the famous Einstein quote where he says, religion without science is blind and science without religion is lame, or it's actually the other way around. But either way, you get the idea. So, I mean, what the point is, is that um, you're going to be a pure rationalist and you're going to be a pure uh, intuitive person. I don't, you're not really going to make it anywhere. You have to keep both your rational and your intuitive mind because you have to be able to think critically but you also have to be able to take creative leaps. Uh, we, don't, we don't make it anywhere without those creative leaps, but we also, those creative leaps aren't able to uh, stay in the, in the world if they don't have a rational application that we can then use to build off of them. So these are, these are just two ways of, of thinking about the world that we both, we need both of them. All right, and that's not to say that you have to be this or you have to be that, but I find it kind of interesting that we argue about these distinctions when to ancient humans, Everything was sacred, okay? Everything was sacred to ancient humans because there were no separations between these ideas. Like, just like I said, at one point in time, everybody worshipped the sun. But now imagine if you were living in uh, ancient Aztecs or Mayan civilization or even the Egyptian civilization and you, had, and you were sitting on top of your pyramid, uh, raised above, like triumphantly above the forest grounds, and you were just looking at the stars. Um, you would be studying those stars. You would be thinking about 
uh, what they mean, uh, how, how their patterns could be charted. And this was a scientific and religious exploit. There was no separation between these two because they were, it was a, ultimately just a search for what reality is. And that's, I think, something that they do share is that religion and science both appreciate this sense of mystery. Now, when we get locked down too much in, into the, inside the institutional and static worldviews that can be you know, stagnant in either of them, that's where we can run into problems. You know, I wanted to bring up another thing. When I, when I was a kid, I used, to, uh, I used to believe that the idea of television made me feel like I was immortal, like I couldn't die. And I can't really explain why I felt that way, but I think the reason that uh, I, that idea popped into my head was that it was an extension of this idea that we have faith in our own technologies and things that we can create, and the idea of seeing something that would uh, mediated and reproduced and then polished and then have you know, all this movie magic and commercials and films and all this other stuff, it seems like, uh, like human beings had literally conquered the forces of life. And so that, that provides, um, an understanding but negligible uh, amount of, of naivety at least you know in a child's mind you're supposed to be you know that have that kind of creativity but it's it's the idea that we put faith into these institutions and into these powers uh, that we've either created or that we are yet to discover and so that leaves me with another point is that any institution that promotes a static worldview denies the basic truth that is that reality is a dynamic mystery that never stops changing Okay, so basic idea being um, science or religion or whatever, they're, they're more just part of an, uh, of an urge of this, of this necessity that we have as humans to explain ourselves, to put our own um, systems of thought, of our experiences, to give them a story, to give them a shape. This is why we come up with creation stories, that's why we come up with myths, that's why we find, you know, we have to find ways to define who we are, and that comes through these kind of systems of organization that are naturally going to to occur. But the point is, is that if we become too attached to um, to those concepts without being receptive to the idea that the world is always going to be bigger than us, and I'm not speaking about the world just as in Earth. I'm thinking about you know the conglomeration of forces that allows human beings to exist, but it allows Earths to exist. It allows existence to continue. Um, we need to find ways for our institutional and perceptual faculties to be in tune with this idea that it's constantly changing okay and that i think means also that we should celebrate our differences because we can learn a lot from different people's ideas about religion about science about culture about history about all these different things uh, you know i've been fortunate enough to be learning more about islam and learning how uh, this uh, quranic cosmology actually has a lot to do with signs of nature and, the, and those are what they consider signs of God so it says you know verily in the Quran it says verily I you know look, look to the heavens and the revolving of the days and the nights to find the signs of God that there are signs of God in the natural world and that's a Quranic cosmology that sometimes people would say oh they're stuck in archaic belief systems but actually that would be something that would be parallel to the ideas of the revelations of science um, you know, same. You could argue the same for any kind of mystical tradition that's existed throughout major world religions. But we can learn a lot. I mean, we can learn a lot from a Buddhist or a Taoist idea of how to live your life, which has less to say specifically about a uh, spiritual other world and these kinds of ideas. So um, I think that the distinction that all religion is bad or no religion is is bad or that one or the other is just going to have some exact truth is kind of silly. I mean, we're we're always crafting ways of thinking about who we are and, and where we belong and, and what our place is in the world. And so uh, I think that we can all kind of uh, at least step beyond these things. We can still have them. And I don't think that that's, there's anything bad with that, but we need to understand that that diversity, that, um, that wealth of, of opinions and ideas and worldviews and philosophies, that is something to be celebrated. That's something that uh, enriches our being in the long run. Not some cultural whitewashed, whitewashed, homogenized version of reality that we all have to accept. As long as we have multiple ideas, that's what's going to allow us to appreciate the real mystery of why the heck we're on this floating ball in the first place. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say for today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.